this next part of activity, we want to take less time, a few minutes, to answer these two questions. Think of the description you gave about your program. Think about the challenges, the obstacles that you have in every different program you are working with. And try to answer these questions. How are you taking advantage of the opportunities in your HSA program? And what strategies do you think might help? Did your SH program, uh, did it help with your SH program to overcome the obstacle? What have you done that has helped? What can you do to help? So think about these two questions. You may share with the person next to you. So we'll take about a few minutes to share and then we'll continue with the third part. Lo que me gusta decir al final de los ejercicios en grupos. No. Vamos a ver. Um, and this is the part two where we, uh, we actually want to learn from you um, because we're in the middle of, again, uh, six years in, I guess, um, trying to start a program, trying to expand a program that's already started. Um, so hearing uh, how you, what strategies you all have employed to overcome obstacles or how you're taking advantage of opportunities, um, it's really helpful for us, but it's helpful for everybody in the room. So, um, so uh, how are you taking advantage of your opportunities? What strategies are you using to overcome your obstacles? That's interdisciplinary, that's awesome. and, and uh, that which is part of actful. That's connections, right? Mm -hmm. Administrators love that. And for those uh, who aren't familiar, the star test is uh, it's a uh, it's a reading level test, yeah. and it's and, and re remind me, but it only takes about thirty minutes, right? Uh, it's long. It's is it long? long. Oh, it's two hours, and they have one in Spanish, not just in English. And the, the STAR test tells you the grade level that they're reading at, too. So you don't have to use just percentages if you want to think about in terms of, okay, what grade level they're reading at. That's, you know. So this is a, place, this is a placement option. Yeah. I want to go over some of the results that we had on our survey. So um, we're looking at our results from our Qualtrics here. Um, we had... Uh, 32 sections completed the uh, survey out of uh, 53 sections that we have in first and second year Spanish and all the courses. And that gave us a total of 261 responses. Um, and uh, so what we learned from this uh, results is that uh, the population of bilingual parents is in bilingual Spanish English? It's uh, for the mothers fourteen point five, for the fathers nine point nine point eight, and then bilingual Spanish other languages one point nine and three point one, and then bilingual English other languages are placed over here, and as you can see, monolingual here, right? So, but we're looking at when we collapse. The bilingual Spanish, English, and other languages, right? When we collapse this, we have 16.4, uh, 12.9. And I'm thinking of the population of, her, uh, of Hispanic students in Baylor. It's very close. So when we ask the students, where do you, where is home? So, um, Texas, 64%, but we have 35% from other states, and uh, uh, we don't have the breakdowns, but we have a lot of kids coming from California, Oklahoma, some of them, Illinois, Illinois. Um, um, I think that California was, for me, the most surprising, and, uh, and then two countries, <laughs> in the least 1%. Um, and, and this breakdown is important for us and because being a private liberal arts college, um, uh, we're, uh, we're not bound necessarily to a state, um, but it's important for us to know that most of our heritage speakers are coming from uh, Texas. So that, that gives us an idea of what we can, um, uh, of uh, the kind of Spanish that the students are exposed to potentially 
you know, it depends because the Spanish in the Valley is very different from Spanish in, um, you know, in Houston or in Dallas. So, and that's another thing. When we were looking, I was looking at the populations uh, of the Texas, where they were coming from, and mostly they're coming from Dallas and Houston. That's the largest uh, population we have. There are other areas, but the, to me, it was interesting to know also.